Hi, Christine. Mm -hmm. um, just thought I would uh, do a little bit more uh, painting demo here before I head to work, actually. This one's going to be a quick one um, because uh, it's just basically getting into the um, type of uh, leaf style that you're going to want on Tinker's dress. Um, of course, I had gotten her body done. Uh, you notice on her shoulder I added a little bit more freckles. I did give her a darker skin tone. It's more olive than uh, than uh, she actually is, but just the way I kind of liked it. So, um, I didn't talk about her eyes last time. Uh, I used uh, two colors of blue in her eyes. Uh, they had pre-printed, of course, the black on her, you know, just stamped her eyes like they had done the rest of the body on this. And if you're actually do uh, painting in a uh, piece that you've printed out on cardstock, of course, you know, you're going to have the eyes pre-printed. So I had left the black in. Um, I do not use a magnifying glass. I have excellent up-close vision. Um, my distance vision is pretty horrid. Cat's chewing on the Christmas tree. Just a second. Oscar, get out of there. Yeah, he likes to gnaw on the Christmas tree and then go vomit it up anywhere he can, usually on somebody's beds. Anyhow, um, what I had also done with her eyes here is I used a pale blue and I had used a darker blue. The darker blue I usually do more as a shadow um, up by the eyelash line, but not too dark because you don't want to drown out uh, the eye eyelash definition versus the uh, uh, corneal uh, part of the eye. Uh, of course, the iris remains black on this one. Um, and then I had taken the you know a different bright blue and had gone on the other part of the cornea lighter. But when I did that, uh, was especially with the size of this figure, um, they're really, the lighter blue I had looked really, really washed out. And, um, unfortunately the one I had, uh, was the difference between, uh, what's called, uh, Blue Jay Delta Ceram Coat, again, the cheap paints, and then Ocean Reef Blue. So I covered the whole thing with the Ocean Reef Blue. Um, then I had done, uh, the white dots as highlights and again I used um, this extremely small uh, brush that I like uh, it's the 10 out low Cor Cornell 7000 it's a round tip and I just barely dipped in the paint um, to do the dots in the eyes and you notice I made them bigger than what's on the cheekbones or the line for the nose is because I wanted to have the eye pop a little bit more. And I think I accomplished that. Um, also, I thought I would talk her eyebrow here. Um, you notice I had done the same brown overlaid with the yellow. If you actually look at her in the cartoons, her hair is a lot more yellow than I made it, but her eyebrows are this shade of brown. So um, that's where I went there. Uh, with her mouth, um, I had used a pink. I'd used two pinks, I think. Yeah. Let me grab that. I had used uh, a bright magenta, which, sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to get this an camera angle here. Uh, this is a bright magenta. It's just another craft paint, of course. I had used the uh, Ceram Coat uh, Red Naphthol Red Light which is a very popping red. Um, I also had used, again, the Lisa pink um, that I had used on her cheeks and stuff. I'd done the pink as kind of an undercoat and then did a little bit of the reds towards the center of her mouth to kind of give it almost that doll-like uh, uh, Japanese doll that you see, um, just because I think they're kind of cute that way. I didn't do any white highlights on her lips. I thought that would be kind of just a little too distracting. So I left that as is. Now, as you can see, I pre-painted. I just did a base coat. And you can already see how the shading just jumps out from this flat look. Um, let me pop out the camera a little bit here. Um, 
Now this is, of course, you can on these figures do just flat painting. And this is what you're going to see. This is the coloring book painting, essentially. If you do um, more of the shading, like under her dress and stuff, you can see how the dress just kind of jumps out. And that's why I like um, this type of uh, painting. I don't like to do things flat. Um, and of course, when I really got to where I was <laughs> embarrassing, when I was coloring in between the lines, I used to, you know, do the really dark outline and then I'd go light in the center with the crayons and all of that. And I've just gone a lot farther than that. <laughs> So um, the only colors I'm going to be using on this dress, and I'm only going to demonstrate one leaf. Uh, your leaf structure is up to you. Um, I uh, The original color I had used on her was a spring green, which is that minty color. I'm going to use a yellow. I'm going to use a shamrock. Um, it's a little darker green. Like I said, it depends on what brand of paint you got. I do suggest you shake the paints up because they do tend to separate a little bit and then you don't get this nice, neat color that you want. I still will pour one drop of Shamrock and I'm only using one drop and one drop of the other green right now um, just for this demonstration purpose. Of course, I'll be using a lot more paint um, to do the rest of her, but I won't be doing the rest of that tonight. I'm not going to use any white on this. If I do white highlights later, I will um, do that on a fin after I've finished all the leaf work to show you how I do any white highlights. Um, and you can see she's got a very tight waistline here, and then she's got the bust. Uh, the leaves, as you can see, Tinkerbell's very small um, in supposed actual size. So these leaves are kind of like... Gra large grass blades um, to small ivy type leaves. So um, what I'm going to just do here, and you want to make them very delicate. You don't want, um, you don't want the shading to be very heavy on these. And I'm just going to try and do just a quick outline so you can kind of see where the leaf body is going to be. Now she does have a little bit of a belt on. I will paint a little green type belt here. If you wanted, you could do a corset. You could paint whatever you wanted on there. But um, the um, if this kit came with little rhinestones that are to be used in the belt area. And I may or may not use them. I'm not sure yet. Okay, so where you want a lot of your highlight here... Well, you, where you want your dark light first. And again, you want this to be a delicate dark lighting. And I'm taking that little darker green and just kind of shading over this. And you can already see there's a little bit of a difference. Your leaves are going to layer over top of each other. And if you really need help, there's plenty of pictures on the internet where leaves have overlapped. Um... And, you know, will be a good reference for you. Otherwise, um, if you're in an area where you can take green leaves and just um, uh, pile them on top of each other and watch how the shadows play. And watch where things are darker. Anything that's on top, you want that to be lighter. So, for instance, as you can see right here on this side, I'm playing out the shadow a little bit more because this leaf over here is over top of it. And then where I'm going on the other side, I'm going to mix a little bit of the spring green with a brush of the yellow that I've got. And it, again, it's the bright yellow that I'm using. And you just want to start going over top of the leaf that is in front on the edge that is in front. You don't want to do the whole thing because you want to be able to keep your shading. But you also want to delineate between what is laying on top and what is underneath. And you notice I'm not using, I mean there is the black here, but I still would not be using black if I 
didn't have this pre-printed outline. I would just be doing the shading and let the shading be its own line work. Um, some other artists do it a little bit different. But um, I'm trying to keep that same feel with just this little bit. And you notice I'm not covering up that light green either. However, I did kind of screw up here a little bit in that these leaves are going to be this part of the leaf, there's this one that's kind of over top here, and that's going to be a little over top of this one. So I had to work some of the black, dark green back in, and I'll be able to just, once this dries, I can correct that later and fix that. And what I'm going to do is bring the dark green to about right here, so I can fix that later. But still, you have a leaf. Now what I wanted to do, and the reason why I'm using the 10 ot brush for this entire thing, is I wanted to get, you notice I'm not filling in with a lot of color anywhere, because you really don't have to once you start getting the leaf details in themselves. And this up close, with such tiny leaves, you're going to see vein detail. And I'm using the straight yellow. I didn't take the green off the brush. I just left it so it kind of blends. And I'm just following the contour of the leaf. And I'm not going all the way up into this dark green area. I'm just doing down where the light will be because I don't want to have it look um, too cartoony. And I don't do the veins too close together on this kind of leaf because to me that would just kind of look silly as well. I go outward and then work my way in. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfectly thin lines. And again, keep in mind where your shadow is. You don't want to go completely into the shadow with this bright yellow because that's going to just be a little too jarring. And you notice you have a little bit of leaf detail right there. Once again, I'm going to highlight this side a little bit more with the same bright yellow.